In this video, we explore what color science tells us about color blindness. Color science gives us the tools for a more technical understanding of color and color vision. We reviewed the basics of color science in the series on color vision videos 1 through 3. The culmination was the creation of what I call the color map, which is another way of describing the chromaticity diagram. On its face, it is a way of displaying and quantifying the entire range or gamut of colors we are able to see. It is a powerful tool that tells us, for example, what color will result if we mix two different colors. It tells us that blue and yellow are complements, and if you mix them, the result is white. It can show the range of colors that a computer screen or a television can display if you specify the primary screen colors. Likewise, we can use this tool to learn useful things about color deficiency. In books that go into detail about color blindness, you will see a version of the chromaticity diagram that looks like this. A protonope is a person who is colorblind because they are missing the red pigment. Because of that, they are unable to tell apart colors that fall along each of the straight lines in the diagram. Therefore, these lines are called confusion lines. If you were only going by color generated from cones, you would expect the color range to fall within this spectrum. However, the opponent color process will affect the final color perception, making it a range from blue to yellow. Kind of makes your head spin. This diagram and its creation will be the subject of this video. In order to understand this section, we will take you through a quick review of color science. This goes fast, so if you want to take it slower, the details are covered in a separate video. Color science is based on color matching. Our color vision results from using three color cones, red, green, and blue. The theory is that by using some combination of these three primary colors, we can match any color of the spectrum. For example, if we choose the color yellow from the middle of the spectrum, we can match that with equal amounts of red and green light. The amounts of each color, red, green, and blue, required to match the different parts of the spectrum are shown on this graph. The three color matching values can also be represented by a vector in color space with three coordinates, as shown here. The three coordinates are the values of the red, green, and blue that made the color match. You can create a unit plane that intersects the 1.0 unit mark on each of the color axes. Then, there is a specific location where each color vector pierces that unit plane. As you enter all the color matching values along the spectrum, you trace out a line called the spectrum locus. This line is the boundary that contains all the colors we can see. Here is the unit plane turned face on, also known as the chromaticity diagram. In our discussion of color deficiency, we have presented the case of missing one of the three color cones, which, as you might expect, will reduce the three-dimensional space into a two-dimensional plane. As an example, this is the space of a person who is missing the red cone. This shows the unit plane, which was the source of the full chromaticity diagram. This line is where the unit plane intersects with the green-blue plane. In other words, the unit plane collapses to this line. Unit plane and intersection line with the green-blue plane. Any color or color vector that falls anywhere on the unit plane has to get mapped somewhere along this line in the protonope. The dashed line shows how a spot in color space gets mapped onto that line. Any color that falls along this dashed line will be mapped back to the same place on the green-blue line, meaning all those colors look the same to the protonope. So this is a confusion line. Note, in the center of the line, where the green and blue are in equal amounts, there is a white, or achromatic, point. That was in color space. Now let's cover the same thing from a different point of view on the chromaticity diagram. Color vision only looks like this if there are three dimensions. 
The chromaticity diagram came from color matching data, starting with the red, green, and blue color matching values. If the red receptor is not functioning, color matching can still be done. The red deficient person still makes matches, but not the same matches as a fully functioning tritonope. Here is the chromaticity diagram with the three primaries. The person without red is matching every color with their two cone primaries, green and blue. For example, if we pick a color, here in the range of cyan, the protonope will make a match somewhere on the blue-green line. Not because he had red to adjust the mix to a new color, but instead because the two colors look the same to him. If you extend the line across the diagram, it turns out the protonope will match all the colors along the dashed line as the same. This again is a confusion line. Here is another way to visualize our map. Everything the protonope sees matches the color along this line. Remember, when the three primary colors were in equal amounts, the result was white. Now, without a red cone, somewhere blue and green are present in equal amounts, and that would be perceived as an achromatic or neutral point. That occurs at 493 nanometers. For the tritonope, the blue and green make cyan. For the protonope, that same area would look achromatic or white. Back to the chromaticity diagram. Here is the neutral point. Here is the equal energy point. That is the point where red, green, and blue combine in equal amounts to make white. If you make a line from the neutral point through the equal energy white, all the colors that fall along this line are perceived by our protonope as achromatic. This is another confusion line. We can continue to add such confusion lines that the protonope sees as all the same color, though not necessarily the same brightness. Next, note that all the lines come together in a point. This is called the copunctal point. Color researchers have used this as one way of finding the location of the missing fundamental red primary. If the green cone is missing, the person is called a deuteranope. There are two neutral points, one at 497 nanometers along the spectrum locus, and another on the purple line along the bottom. Different authors give different values for this copunctal point. The confusion lines look like this. And if the blue cone is missing, the person is called a tritonope. Here are the neutral and copunctal points. And here are the confusion lines. But we are not done yet. We have only taken into account the first stage of color processing by the cones. Stage two of color processing involves the color opponent channels. Taking into account the second stage, this is what the final spectrum looks like to a deuteranope, a person missing the green cone. It ends up as a palette of blue and yellow. The neutral point is labeled. This is what the spectrum looks like to a protonope, with the neutral point labeled. The protonope and deuteranope end up with the red-green kind of color blindness, with the resulting spectrum looking quite similar. For the protonope, color at the far red end of the spectrum may end up just looking dark or black. The tritonope ends up with the blue-yellow kind of color blindness, and his spectrum looks quite different. In previous videos, we used John Dalton to tell us in person what a colorblind person saw. Here is the color spectrum as someone with normal color vision sees it. Dalton, looking at the same spectrum of colors, described what he saw. Quote, I found that persons in general distinguish six kinds of color in the solar image, namely red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and purple. To many, it is quite otherwise. I see only two, or at most three, distinctions. These I should call yellow and blue, or yellow, blue, and purple. My yellow comprehends the red, orange, yellow, and green of others, and my blue and purple coincides with theirs. Two centuries after his death, genetic studies showed Dalton was missing the M cone pigment, making him a deuteranope. 
Here is another example of what the world likely looks like to a person with significant red-green color blindness. Red-green color deficit is by far the most common kind of color blindness, occurring in about 8% of men, but only half a percent of women. It is important to note that it occurs in varying degrees from mild to severe. We have more to say on color perception in the final video in this series. Here is what we have covered in the other videos about color blindness. In the first video, we presented a review of color vision and basic genetics, including location of color genes on different chromosomes, X-linked inheritance, and recombination of genes. In video number two, we built on that information showing how inherited color deficiency happens either by missing a cone or by recombination, creating hybrid or chimeric genes. In this video, we used what we know from color science to understand color deficiency in a more technical way. In the last video, we take a descriptive approach to understand and simulate what the world looks like with, a, with different levels of color deficiency. Here are selected references if you want to read more.